Mirandy and Brother Wind by Patricia C. McKissick Illustrated by Jerry Pinkman When you hear this sound, it's time to turn the page. Swish! Swish! It was spring, and Brother Wind was back. He come high stepping through Ridge Top, dressed in his finest, and trailing that long, silvery wind cape behind him. Swoosh! 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 Sure wish Brother Wind could be my partner at the Junior Cakewalk tomorrow night, say Mirandy, her face pressed against the cool cabin window. Then I'd be sure to win. Ma dear smiled. There's an old saying that whoever catch the wind can make him do their bidding. I'm going to, say Mirandy, and she danced around the room, dipping, swinging, turning, wheeling. This is my first cakewalk, and I'm going to dance with the wind. When the sky turned morning pink, Mirandy set out to capture Brother Wind. Grandmama Beasley was out back feeding her chickens when Mirandy come up asking all excited, Do you know how to catch Brother Wind? I want to make him be my partner at the cakewalk tonight. Grandmama Beasley studied on the notion. Can't nobody put shackles on Brother Wind, Ja. He be special. He be free. Mirandy asked all her neighbors the same question, but nobody seemed to have an answer. I'm going to get him yet, she said, turning round and round in the yard. Get who? She didn't even have to look around to know it was that clumsy boy, Ezel. Mirandy didn't answer, but walked toward the road. Ezel came, too, walking backward to face her. He was sure to trip any minute. And he did. Why you been asking everybody how to catch the wind? Ma dear told me whoever catch the wind can make him do their bidding. I want him to be my partner at the cakewalk tonight. But I thought I... After a moment, Ezel flashed his good-natured smile. His eyes sparkled like sun glints on branch water. He say, what do you think Orlinda would say if I asked her to be my partner? Orlinda, skinny Orlinda, ask her and find out, say Mirandy. And she strutted away. At the corner store, Mr. Jessup told Mirandy that a great aunt of his from Ypsilon, Mississippi, said to put black pepper in Brother Wind's footprints. That would make him sneeze. While he's busy sneezing, slip up behind and throw a quilt over him. Mirandy rushed home and got the black pepper mill and one of Ma Dear's quilts. Wasn't long for Brother Wind came strolling through the meadow, his wind cape hovering gentle-like over the grasses. Sneaking up behind him, Mirandy commenced to grinding pepper. Then she threw the quilt, but whoosh! Brother Wind was gone. <coughs> Mirandy was still sneezing when she told Ezel what happened. I could have told you the wind don't leave footprints, he say as he milked the family cow. He was sure to spill some, and he did. Mirandy sneezed again. <laughs> Did you?
Did you ask Olinda about being your partner? She say, changing the subject. Sure did. And she say, I don't care what she said. Mirandi interrupted and rushed away. Following the creek downstream, Mirandi come to Ms. Poinsettia's whitewashed cottage. Talk had it that Ms. Poinsettia wasn't a for real conjure woman like the ones in New Orleans. But didn't nobody mess with her just in case talk was wrong. Ms. Poinsettia welcomed Mirandi inside. Your people don't approve of conjure. Why you come here? She said. Mirandi figured if Miss Poinsettia was up on her conjure, she ought to know why. But not wanting to appear sassy, she answered. I need a potion to help me catch Brother Wind so he'll be my partner at the cakewalk. The woman shook her head. Then she switched over to a cupboard, her jewelry jingling and jangling, and the colorful scarves sewn to her dress fluttering about. In a quick minute, she returned with an old book. Mirandi put the words in her head as Ms. Poinsettia read them. I'm ever grateful, say Mirandi. But all I have as payment are my Christmas and birthday nickels. Consider me well paid if you wear these when you dance tonight. And I guarantee you'll be the prettiest girl there. And Miss Poinsettia gave Mirandi two of her see-through scarves. Mirandi hurried home. Like the conjure spell said, she found a crock bottle, washed it in water from the rain barrel, and poured in a measure of cider. Then she made her way to the big willow down by the branch and set the bottle on the tree's north side. Nothing left to do but wait. For long, Brother Wind came out the woods. Mirandi had never seen a body stand so tall or hold his head so high. The conjure was working. He smelled the cider. With a big whoosh, he jumped into the bottle. I got you! Mirandi pushed in the cork and danced round and round. But when she looked, Brother Wind was on the other side of the branch, bent over laughing. <laughs> then, flicking the tail of the wind gate, he vanished. Swoosh! get in and out of that bottle so fast, she asked Ezel at the woodpile. He'd pulled the wrong log, and the whole pile had come crashing down on him. Mirandi was helping him restack it. What am I going to do? Ezel laughed. <laughs> Looks like you're going to need a partner. Mirandi got purely upset. You laughing, but just wait, I'll catch him yet, she shouted and left in a huff. The cakewalk was only a few hours away, and Mirandi was moping on the front porch swing when Brother Wind swooped over the hedges, kicking up dust. He leaped over the lilacs, around the snowball tree, and into the barn. While he was inside, shaking the rafters and scaring Ma Dia's hens, Mirandi slipped up quiet-like and slammed the door. No way for him to get out, cause Pa had stuffed all the cracks. I got you, she say, clapping her hands. Now you've got to do whatever I ask. At dusk, the neighbors from the ridge started gathering at the schoolhouse. 
everybody dressed in their Sunday best. The fiddler stood in one corner, and Grandmama Beasley and the other elder folk sat in the judges' seats. Elder Thomas brought in two big triple-decker cakes, one for the junior cakewalk winners and the other for the grown-up winners. Somebody drew a big square in the middle of the floor, and the cakewalk jubilee began. First thing, Orlinda comes siding up to Mirandy asking, Who's going to be your partner? Mirandy tried not to act excited. He's real special. Then she added, I wish you and Ezel luck. You're going to need it. Me and Ezel? Girl, don't be silly, he asked. But I wouldn't dance with that old clumsy boy for nothing, she say, fanning herself. Why, he can't even now walk and breathe at the same time. I didn't want him tripping over my feet in front of the whole county. And the girls laughed. Mirandy put her hands on her hips and moved right in close to Orlinda. You just hush making fun of Ezel, you hear? She said quiet like. He's my friend. And it just so happens we're going to win that cake. And she tossed her head in the air and hurried away. Outside, Mirandy wondered why she'd said such a tomfool thing. She'd caught Brother Wind. Ezel couldn't be her partner. But an idea came. Brother Wind, she called. You still in there? The barn door rattled and almost shook off its hinges. I'm ready with my wish. She whispered it, then hurried to find Ezel. Weeks passed, and still, rich folk talked about how Mirandy and Ezel had won the junior cakewalk. That night, they pranced round and round, cutting corners with style and grace. Swish! Swish! And when the music had changed to a fast gait, they'd arch their backs kicked up their heels and reeled from side to side. Swoosh! Swoosh! Folks still talked about how Mirandy was a picture of pretty. Dressed in yellow with two colorful scarves tied round each wrist. And everybody agreed Ezel had never stood taller or held his head higher. When Grandmama Beasley had seen Mirandy and Ezel turning and spinning, moving like shadows in the flickering candlelight, she'd thrown back her head, laughed, and said, Them children is dancing with the wind.